ready? So we're heading to the airport, RDU. We're going to pick up Jamila. Jamila actually is the first Canadian to uh, participate in our jet lag trips to Africa. So we're really excited. Behind me is my daughter, Emma. Emma, what are you? Uh, Social media. Blog uh, editor. Blog editor. <laughs> uh, in my time, they used to call you Girl Friday. So, <laughs> Girl Friday? Yeah, actually, wow. yeah. Someone who just handles a lot of stuff. They do everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, Eric's in the house. Yes, truly. Brooklyn. <laughs> okay, we had to throw that in there because we know he was going to do it anyway. So, um,. <laughs> So anyway, so yeah, we're excited to pick Jamila. So basically what happens at this point of the traveling to Africa is uh, after the whole uh, process, the application process and the vetting and making sure everybody is legal and able to leave the country, we make sure we all take off from one place uh, for safety. Because once uh, all that is done and the date has been set, Jetlag is responsible for the safety of our travelers. So, uh, we all try to leave from the same airport and, and this um, for this trip it's going to be RD, which is in North Carolina because we live in North Carolina. So we're going to pick her up and then later on this afternoon we're going to pick up Sterling. Alrighty guys, we'll keep you posted. This is the first time we have done a singles trip. What is really exciting with this trip guys is we have two people that are paired together from different cultures. What better way to learn a culture? You use that person, that's your tour guide. That's your tour guide, it, it can get better than that. My name is Jamila. Um, also known on Instagram as Jamila Iman. I am a bartender, a student, and I also work um, with the city of Toronto at their shelters. My name is Sterling Calhoun. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I do a lot of things. Um, <laughs> the day by day, a government worker. I'm also a filmmaker, a writer. I'm a business owner. I do, I do real estate and I also have vending machines. Hey everyone, my name is Evelyn Mukumba and I'm 27 years of age. I am a professional makeup artist and I'm from Bulawayo. Me being here is basically trying to express how it feels to be Zimbabwean and what it means to be Zimbabwean as well. Hi, my name is Tamuka Chigeda. I would like to say that if you intend to travel from the US, from Europe, to Zimbabwe or anywhere in Africa, I would recommend you look up Jetlag Africa. Um, I've been wanting to go on a trip so bad. Couldn't really afford it at this time because you know I'm in school. My good friend sent me Jetlag Africa's kind of DM call for people that are single, available during this time to, to travel and looking for an adventure and so I just responded to, the next day had like an hour-long conversation with Winnie I didn't believe it at first I'm like okay well great free trip this is nice but what's the catch you know as the weeks went on just having conversations hearing all about like what we're gonna do I, I just started to get excited I fell in jet lag through um, social media one of my good friends Lakeisha Jean um, she was posting about it and about the trip she just went on and, I, and of course that piqued my interest. I love to travel and I hit her up. I got introduced to Winnie and 
you know the rest is history it's been a long <laughs> a long long um trip here but so far it's been great Law is basically a very chilled town. There's not much that goes on there, but the, what I love about it is that it's very cultured. People are still in touch with their culture and it hasn't been distorted as much. I remember growing up and watching like World Vision commercials coming on the TV and seeing very skinny, malnourished children with flies on their eyes and thinking, oh no, that's what Africa's like. That's the kind of image that the media has shown us. And as I've grown older, I realized that that's not true at all. And I knew that I had to come here myself. What I'm experiencing now is nothing like what I would have thought from looking at the media, looking at TV. Johannesburg might as well be like New York or LA, like any major city in the US. Just the way it's like built, it's the things you see, the beautiful women in Johannesburg. Um, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I digress. Even here in Zimbabwe. Um... I love being Zimbabwean for the mere fact that it has got such beautiful people who practice peace and are very educated. Well, Winnie and Eric of Jetlag, uh, they welcomed me into their home on my first night arriving um, to meet up with them and they were so friendly, so warm, and it really felt like I was staying with distant family. So that was already a really good start. Um, and then meeting Sterling, and then Eve. I'm a really, really appreciative of Winnie and Eric opening in a home to me. Just the conversations I've had with them, just eat, breaking bread with them. Um, I'm a big person that goes off of vibes, and ever since they picked me up, the vibes have just been nothing but good. I feel like they, they're like distant family that I haven't met yet. Eric was in the car talking sports, talking about the Eagles and the Cowboys. Like I've known him my whole life. It's so amazing. At first I was quite nervous actually. I was like, oh my God, how am I even gonna, <laughs> how is everyone gonna react to all that? But everything has been very smooth. And what I love about my peers is that they are very open to trying out our culture, which makes my work here quite easy. <laughs> Originally I'm from that side of Zimbabwe. I am um, Manyika, which is a tribe from the Eastern Highlands in, in Zimbabwe. As a mixed person, my dad is from the Caribbean and my mom's Filipino. And so growing up, I really struggled with my personal identity, especially when it came to culture, because I'm half Asian, half black. I look black, I mean, I think. So to really be able to understand myself and where I came from, I had to come here. I made my first trip when I went to Ghana last year, stayed for a month and absolutely loved it. And then here I am again in Zimbabwe. On this trip, I'm paired up with Sterling from America. So I'm basically his host. I'm gonna be answering all the questions that he needs to know. Yeah, he's quite an interesting guy. I like his sarcasm and he's a good listener as well, like so far. And we've had such good conversation thus far. So I'm pretty much excited to see how the rest of the trip is going to go, but I don't think I'm going to have that much difficulty in, you know, engaging with him. I'm not going to lie, at first when I meet people I'm a little shy and quiet, but then, you know, as the time's going on and we're spending and sharing space together, um, it's just become, a, it's, it's, it feels natural to kind of open up. And then I met Eve this evening on the bus and she was very friendly, like asking me questions off the gate and we're just conversating. Um, I'm always comparing what I'm hearing here to how I ex what I experienced in Toronto and uh, hearing about Zimbabwean culture. The family is very important where I feel like back home everyone's focused on themselves and what they want to do and their own success. In Toronto at least everyone's moving so fast paced like you get into an elevator and you don't even look at the other person standing next to you and it's just the two of you in there. Isn't that strange? You know, so to come on a trip like this where we're meant to socialize and like get to know people and enjoy the experience, it's really nice. I'm able to kind of slow down and enjoy life for a second. And just even the things that we, we, we've been able to experience going to a traditional African restaurant. This is knuckleball, the joints of the cow. Uh-huh. Yes. 
and this is mutsine uh, blackjack this one yeah then this is rabbit tsuro tsuro yes okay rabbit. then this is rotrana <laughs> african chicken rice with peanut butter that's more knuckle bone okay rotrana is just a chicken it's like a wild chicken it's like yeah he's the one that runs on the <laughs> he's the road runner <laughs> Then this one is foxtail. Ooh, are you speaking my language? Then it's guinea fowl. Guinea fowl, it's like, like a wild turkey. Uh, I, I like, feel it's again. Like your chickens and turkeys, they are wild. Okay. Yeah. Then this one is beef bones. Beef bones. It's, uh, I feel it's again. Uh, but it's guinea fowl again. Okay. Then this one is rabbit. This, this one is sugar beans. Ah, uh, this one is oxtail again. Okay, and those are fries. <laughs> but we call them chips here. Yeah, it's chips. We don't call them fries. I'm trying things for the first time. I tried a worm today. I never thought I'd be trying a worm. <laughs> I think Sterling went to the kitchen and told them we're allergic. I, I did not. Sterling, you told them not to bring the worm. I did not. I'm a man of my word. I told you I'd try it. <laughs> what you really don't care about? Oh, yeah. Oh, hi, guys. Oh, hi, guys. Oh, hi, guys. Oh, hi, guys. cool, really laid back and down to earth, much like myself. Um, so I think we're going to get along just fine. She was very helpful at the restaurant, telling me what was what, was what, and what I need to eat, how I need to pair it, you know, things I didn't know, teaching me how to pronounce things correctly, um, even though I messed that up a couple times and got laughed at. Um, <laughs> so. Um, I tried the, what is it, um, Mapani worm. That was good. That wasn't too, I was, I thought that it would be like a live worm that was not seasoned or, you know, raw, wiggly, chewy worm. Um, but it was not that at all. It was, I was surprised. Tastes like barbecue. Fine. Like the jerky I was eating on the bus. <laughs> and I'm a saucy girl when it comes to eating food. So I really appreciated all the stews and the salsa. That's a nice side to have. I don't know what the greens were called, but it reminds me of a lot of like Jamaican Kalaloo, which I'm used to eating at home. It didn't feel foreign to me. The cuts of meat is different, but essentially like stewed things very um, similar to Caribbean or even Filipino uh, cuisine. I, I was actually quite comfortable and enjoyed the food. The cool thing about jet lag is you're going to experience things that you wouldn't be able to experience if you came to Africa on your own. So you get to live in communities and communicate with Africans or specifically Zimbabwe's or yesterday we was in Johannesburg and get to go to places that you wouldn't typically go if you came here on your own. Um, just knowing the, the right people to talk to, just knowing where to eat and everything like that just makes a bit of a difference. I am looking forward to obviously getting to know Sterling better and experience the, all the excursions that we are going to partake in. I'm excited for that. Um, Eve seems like an awesome person. I'm looking forward to getting to know her over the next couple of days. So as a Zimbabwean, uh, being part of this uh, experience, is to show other Africans that they can also take part and embark on these trips with jet lag. You also get a chance to visit other countries for free. And you can also subscribe to their YouTube channels to get to know more about them. And this is what I've been able to see and experience so far and only being here for not even a full day um, is, is pretty cool. This house that we stay in and this mansion it will, will is, is, will rival any mansion in the U.S. Unbelievable, magnificent. I was like, wait, is this, this is where we at? <laughs> like, is this a hotel or is it a house? Like, who lives here? I do, for the next couple of days. And it's just amazing because if it weren't for Jet Lag Africa, I don't know if or when I'd be able to 
stay in a beautiful place like this. I'm just excited about the things that come. We, we got that, we got zip line, and we, we had this mansion with, with like a balcony and pools and a gym. So um, it's just been really cool, you know, up until this point, everything we've been able to do. And I'm just, I'm just having a good time, man. I'm here, I'm here for the ride. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the daylight to come so I can just film the whole thing and I, I'm excited to share it with it, um, everyone back at home. It's been a great journey so far and you know, I'm just looking forward to what else we, we, we have to do. I think it's important for self-growth. There are so many people that haven't been able to travel and that's okay. I would absolutely speak for going out there and getting uncomfortable, meeting people, experiencing cultures that you wouldn't think of. I think that's really important. I, I encourage more people to try something like that. And guess what? Jet Lag Africa is doing that. Um, and it actually is free. I'm here. I'm here. And um, they're taking care of everything. It's such an amazing experience. I also don't know anyone like Jet Lag Africa that's, that's doing things like this. Like, I'll wait. Name, name a company. Especially halfway across the world. We're quite far away from home. And for it to be taken care of all by Jet Lag Africa because they want to give people this experience that is not so easily accessible is, is just amazing and I'm really grateful. Excited about this cooking competition that's gonna come up. Oh, I already told her, you know, me and Eve is going, is, is going to bust their ass. Wash as I go, so that the loser doesn't have too much to do at the end. Whether it be you or us. I feel bad for them as well. Oh, you know, all that effort for nothing. Ah! Get the strings started right now, baby. I wanna do something freaky to you, baby. I think we could actually be a good match. <laughs>